Whether you call it a Z or a Z, more than even the GTR Skyline, this is the car that defines Nissan today, just like it did for Datsun back in 1969. We've been waiting for this moment. Who am I kidding? I've been waiting for this moment for a very long time, since I was maybe seven years old, because that's when I started loving the Z. We were offered a chance to drive the new Z late last year, but it was automatic, and I'm sorry. It had to have three pedals, the six-speed manual version. Even better though, talk about being worth the wait. This is the Proto Z version. Those bronze 19-inch alloys and lots and lots of yellow. But this isn't some tribute act wearing too much makeup. This is a genuine sports car. In fact, it's pretty close to being a muscle car. That's the thing with the profile, it has a strict two-seater like all the best Zs should be. And then under the liftback, like all the best Zs had, is not a whole lot of boot space, just 240 litres. But under the back is a Bose subwoofer. I love all the retro touches, especially the old school Z. In fact, it always used to perplex me, I'll just digress for a moment here. When I was a young fella, I couldn't get why it was called the Fear Lady Z. Well, we didn't have Google back then, we do now. It turns out the president of Nissan back then loved the musical My Fear Lady. It was simple as that. I suppose at least he didn't like Mary Poppins. Although Nissan have included plenty of electronic nannies, emergency braking, intelligent cruise control, lane departure and blind spot warning, cutting edge safety tech alongside the old school drivetrain. Okay, one thing worth pointing out is, is this is just the Z, it doesn't have a number. If it did, it would be the 300Z. Look at that bonnet strut, haven't used one of them for years. It really is a retro machine. Uh, it replaces the old 370Z, which was 3.7 litres, right. This though has a twin turbo, so 50 more kilowatts, that's almost 300 kilowatts or 400 horsepower. This is the most powerful production Z yet. Well, the silhouette mostly references the 240, that engine is just as much of a Z tradition. The last five generations have been powered by V6s. I'm a sucker for retro done well. In fact, if Nissan had done this any better, there would have been a Datsun badge on the front. Look at the bonnet bulge and then this front grille, which is pure 240, 260 to me. So too are these lights. The DRLs sort of emulate the round headlights from the first Z cars. So too the side profile, that is pure Z, the pure Z, the two seaters not the 2 plus 2. Speaking of that as well, the rear tail lights paying tribute to the 300ZX. Again, not that 2 plus 2, but that really awesome one from the early 90s. And those three gauges up on the dash, including a turbo rev counter, it's really, and the king of throwbacks, three pedals and a manual box. If you're under 30, this is how it used to be. A manual gearbox. You see, back when the Z was new, automatic gearboxes were slow and, and slushy. They definitely weren't for sports cars. They said though, for a while, the Z was pretty slushy too. I'm talking the 280Z and the first 300Z. But the new Z doesn't channel any of those socky vibes, thank goodness and even the nine-speed auto version is quick. But if you want the true 70s vibe, manual is the only way to go. Forgive the Gen X reminiscing, but you know, when the Z first came out, the toughest thing about learning to drive wasn't getting off TikTok when you were behind the wheel, it was mastering the manual transmission. The art of the clutch bike, matching revs. But you know, once you stop kangaroo hopping away from the lights, the manual gearbox, well, it symbolised the true joy of driving. I probably need to come clean. This is a manual transmission, yes, but it does have some driver aids. To start with, when you change down, it matches revs, so you're like a double the clutching pro. It's also got hill start assists. You don't need to use this handbrake, and a proper old school handbrake it is too. 
it'll pull away, you won't stall, you won't slip the clutch. So yes, it does help you, but it's still epic, epic fun. Whether you go auto or manual, the price is the same. How's that? With the Z starting at $84,990 at Giltrap Nissan. This top model Proto Z is $92,990. Now that's seriously good pricing for a car this special. And it's not a stripped out sports car, you get heated seats, a 12.3 inch screen, CarPlay, Android Auto and a Godzilla level dash display. It's not just the looks that are retro, this car feels retro to drive, but in a good way. You actually feel like there is, maybe not a straight six, but there's a proper six cylinder lump up the front. The driving position, you're sitting right on the back wheel, there's even a bit of body roll. Real 70s sports car touch, and it differentiates it from the previous model, the 370Z. So does the performance. Even if Nissan doesn't give their official 0 to 100 time, the Z has recorded a 4.5 second sprint, so faster than even the Nismo version of the 370Z. It's not a super sophisticated drive, and it shouldn't be. It feels like a 70s sports coupe reborn. I, I feel like I'm driving a 260 for the first time. I absolutely love this car. Yeah, there's plenty of talk and I think they're right that this is the last of a breed. And I'm not talking about that manual gearbox, I'm talking about the Z as an internal combustion powered sports car. And if that is the case, this car is the perfect way to bow out.